Today we're going to be taking a look at this TC100 watt ISA V starter kit by Inakin. Let me tell you something about Inakin. They've had their skin in the vape game for a long time. A long time. They've been in it pretty much from the get go. They are underrated. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. This product is underrated. And Inakin, if you're watching this right now, this starter kit you guys made is hellacious. Hellacious. It's bangerang. I keep saying underrated because that's what it is. Most people in this industry that are beyond, you know, the newbie type products are not drawn to this. It just seems like a lot of this, this industry, they're all drawn to flashy. And that's good. Good because if it weren't for the flashy, if it weren't for the high waters, the big time RTAs, the big time dribber tanks, the RDAs, this industry wouldn't be what it is if it weren't for those products. But you got to think about this. This industry would not be what it is today if it weren't for products like this, okay? This is newbie. This is dummy proof. Ever since I picked this up, it's brought me back to Anakin. Before, I kind of just wanted to stay away from Anakin. And I don't know, I get caught into it like everybody else. I mean, I see, I get all these products in on a daily basis, all these flashy products that I want to review for you guys because I'm like, ooh, what is this? But when I receive something and I vape on it and it works. It's efficient. It's easy to use. I mean, how are you going to ignore it? And you also can't ignore the fact that what people are drawn to about vaping is that it gets smokers off of smoking and over to vaping. That's what this is about. That's what this goal is about. And that's another thing I have respect for Inakin for. They never got away from it. They could have easily made a 200 watt device, a 300 watt device, tried to compete with everybody else. But no, they made things dummy proof. They made things easy to use for the smokers that wanted to switch off and go to vaping. And that is why I have respect. And that's why I like this product because it works. So right now I've got her set to 445 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm vaping at 65 watts. That's another really cool feature. You can adjust the wattage in temperature mode. We'll get into that. I've got the uh, the ISA V tank sitting on here. It's wide open all across the board, the dual airflow. And I've got the stainless steel coil head in here. And these stainless steel coil heads are mint, man. They are on point. But yeah, I got a wide open 445 degrees at 65 watts. Here we go. Oh man, and I got a set to where I could take long ass drags, long ass hits, and I could just go. It could chuck, chuckify. The flavor's fantastic for a sub ohm tank. It's not as good as an RTA, but this is a sub ohm tank. And for a sub ohm tank and these cool heads, it ranks up there, right up there with the best of them, right up there with the best of them. There's zero ramp ups, like 0 0.2 seconds, and then it just hits. Some of these mods or starter kits out there, they have a delay. This one does not. So you guys know the drill. I think it's about that time we dive down. I'll show you this thing right here. Up close and personal. We'll come back, talk about the pros and the cons, and I'll let you know if I lost this sucker today. We're going to go out tomorrow and buy one. So here's the packaging for this TC100 ISO V starter kit. Got this magnetic flap, pops open. The first thing you are going to see is a start guide. And then underneath that, we got our tank, our ISUB V, and our TC100. And under those two products, you receive a USB cable for charging, this 0.5 ohm Canthal BVC coil head, an extra Delra drip tip, and a protective Inakin rubber band for your tank. You also receive a Buku of O-rings. And then underneath those things, you receive a user manual and two Inakin stickers. Let's go ahead and start with this ISUB V tank. Now, she's primarily made of stainless steel. She comes pre-installed with this Pyrex, clear Pyrex tank. She's 22 millimeters in width, and she's about 51 millimeter in height with this Delra drip tip. You got dual adjustable airflow down at the base, one slot on one side, one slot on the other. You just grab this ring and just turn and you got a little stopper right here and she stops. Okay, see that? Here, I'll turn on this side so you can see it. There's a the stopper. She stops right there. Perfect amount of restrictiveness. Whatever you adjust on this side is going to be the exact same on this side. I like to keep her wide open though. That's my speed for this tank. At the base, you got a non-adjustable 510 pin. Threads are nice and smooth. Here's the drip tip. The Delra drip tip up top comes out double O-ringed. And then here's the top cap. Now this is a top fill device. Quick look at that top cap. One thing with these devices, this iSub V, is the tank does not come out. I don't think it's meant to come out. I've already broken three of these bad boys. Already shattered the glass on three of them, so it needs to stay in there. But look at the shaft. It pushes down, okay? And check it out. That's your cool head down there. But the shaft, how it works is when you push it down, it opens up the juice flow control and feeds the juice to the coil. As long as it stays up, it blocks off the juice flow control. Pretty cool feature. So that way, when you fill her up, once you install the coil head, it's blocked off. That way, the juice does not flood the coil head. And in order to pop the coil head in and out, all you gotta do is unscrew the base. Same type of design as the iSub Apex tank and all these other iSub tanks, but the coil head press fits into the base. So you can pull it out like so. And the coil head that comes pre-installed in this kit is the SS316L, 30 to 60 watts. That's the recommended vape. And here it is up top. Here's a screen for spitback, spitback protection. But it's a vertical coil. There's your, your wick holes on each side, giant wick holes. And it uses organic cotton. So with these ISUB tanks, the 510 connection is attached to the coil head. But yeah, there's the base that this coil head press fits into. And you just got to line it up, line it up correctly. 
Press it in, and all you gotta do is just screw in the base. And you're rocking. Now with this kit, you also receive a 0.5 ohm camp out coil head, recommended vape 30 to 60 watts. It comes with a black band instead of the blue one like you just saw with the stainless steel. Still a vertical coil, it's got that screen for spit back protection. Got those huge wick holes. And it also uses organic cotton. So first things first, we gotta juice this coil head up. And if you're a newbie watching, make sure that you get this cotton nice and saturated because you do not wanna burn it. Now the good thing about using these stainless steel coil heads is this thing can run in temperature mode. This stainless steel, you can run it also in water mode if you want. But I recommend running this thing in temperature mode because you'll never get a dry hit. It's fantastic. Now the juice that I'm gonna be using today, ooh, is Indoor Smokers Vapesta Juice Line. This is the original Vapesta, which is a, uh, oh, it's a nice grape. Who doesn't like grape? Look at that joker with the long hair and his spiffy jacket. Oh my gosh, Indoor smokers he's a trip isn't he gotta love it so we'll go ahead and juice her up put a little juice on there a little juice in here a little juice in here press fit it into the base make sure you line it up and there we go screw in the base and we're rocking and all you got to do from there is just fill her up and like i said without the top cap the shaft just rises up and it blocks off the juice flow control so we can fill it up easy peasy what sleazy without having any leakage without having any overflow of the juice to the coil head fill her up and she holds 3.8 mils of juice Pop the top cap on there, and when I press down, it's going to press down that shaft, and it's gonna open up the juice flow control. And you should be able to see it. You should be able to see those bubbles. See that? It's feeding juice, baby. Feeding juice to the uh, coil head. Pop the drip tip in there. But yeah, like I said before about the Enikin products, this tank is dummy proof, man. No leaking, and it, they've made it that way. So here's the mod that comes with this kit, the Cool Fire 4 TC100. Got your ventilation on one side, it says TC100 on one side, and it bows out. See that in the back? So it feels good. It's meant for the palm. Oh, yes. Got the menu screen on one side, fire button, water up, water down, and the USB port. And that's another pro that I'm not going to mention in FaceTime. I love how the USB port is on the side and not on the base. But I really like the three lines, too. It's a nice touch. Nice little badge there. Up top, you got a stainless steel 510 connection and a spring-loaded 510 pin. And here's the base. It says capacity 3300 milliamp hour. It's got a 3300 milliamp hour built-in battery in here. And all you got to do to charge it up is plug your USB USB port into here and into your computer or your wall adapter and you're rocking. And this does have two amp quick charge. So you can use this thing with your two amp wall adapters. Screw the tank in and immediately the screen's gonna light up. Right now it is off. You gotta click this thing three times to turn her on. One, two, three. 445 degrees Fahrenheit, that's what it's set to. That's what I had it set to. Oh yeah, look at that. When I click the fire button after that, it says same, nickel, titanium, stainless steel, or wattage. I've got a stainless steel coil head in here. So I'm gonna adjust it with the wattage buttons. Stainless steel, hit the fire button, and boom, it's set to stainless steel. So this is what the iSub V looks like on this mod. I mean, she fits pretty darn flush. There's just a tiny bit of a gap. See that? Barely. I mean, you have to look really close, but still, looks the tits. So yeah, like I said, three clicks of the fire button turns this device on and off. Right now it's on. We're gonna go ahead and click it three times to turn her off or to lock her. And you see that light up? Now she's locked, and she will eventually shut off. Now to turn her on, same thing, three clicks. And as you guys can see, it's in stainless steel mode because we've got a stainless steel cool head and already switched it to stainless steel. But if I want to go ahead and switch it to nickel and titanium and wattage, watch this. All I got to do is hold down the fire button, the wattage up button down at the same time, and it switches over to wattage. You see that? And you can adjust the wattage all the way up to 100 watts. And in order to do that, you got to hold down the wattage up or the wattage down button until it blinks. And I will say this, it moves slow. And it goes back down. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up for you. So from 6 to 100 watts. And then around robins. So you can go back to 6 watts. That's another really cool feature. That speeds it up quite a bit actually. So yeah, right now we're in wattage. And as you guys can see, you can see the resistance, the voltage, the wattage in the seconds, and the battery gauge. See that? The battery gauge. But every time you hit the fire button, you're going to see a counter. And I'll show you when we get back to stainless steel mode. So yeah, hold down the fire button, the wattage up button. Down at the same time. And it switches to nickel. Hold it down again. Switches to titanium. Hold it down again. Switches it back to stainless steel. So right now it's set at 445 degrees Fahrenheit at 100 watts. Now watch this. I'm going to hit the fire button and watch the counter. See that? Now if I want to adjust the temperature, all I got to do is hold down the water button, the water jump button or the water down button. She'll blink and then I can adjust.
So in Fahrenheit, you can vapor between 300 and 600 degrees, or you can vapor in Celsius. 150 degrees Celsius to 315 degrees Celsius. Go back down into Fahrenheit. And when you adjust in temperature, it adjusts in 0.5 increments, see that? Now you can adjust the wattage while you're in temperature mode, which is another cool feature. And in order to do that, you gotta hold down the fire button, the wattage down button down at the same time. And that wattage will blink and you can adjust from there. And you can adjust it between 25 watts and 100 watts. And it does round robin, look at that. And another cool thing about this product is it has quick response. When you hit the fire button, it's gonna be like no longer than 0.2 seconds before that thing fires up. Fast, baby, fast. Now, if I hold the water jump and water down buttons down at the same time while this device is unlocked, it flips the screen. And it also shows the voltage of the battery. Watch this, again, 3.82. Now, I do want to show you this. If I screw other tanks on there, about half the tanks that I own, there's gonna be more of a gap. Look at that. Definitely more than the iSub V. And even with their own iSub Apex tank, there's more of a gap on this than there is the iSub V. Now what I did was I put the band on there, and the reason why they include the band is because they obviously, they don't include a replaceable tank. Even though they say they do, which is gonna be mentioned as a con, they include a band and that's to protect it. So if you fall, if you drop it, it's going to protect the glass. And I've done that a few times and it does, it protects it. So that right there, boys and girls, is an up close view of the Cool Fire 4 TC100 iSub V starter kit. Let's go ahead and take her back to FaceTime. First pro, price point, price point, price Price point. The site that sent this device to me to review for you guys is selling it for $68.99. And $68.99 for a tank and a mod that works like this is a steal. Two, the battery life I get off this is freaking extreme, man. It is. It does not feel like a 3,300 milliamp hour built-in battery. It feels like more. I could go forever. I've gone like, I'm, I'm like halfway done with this. I vape every like 10, 15 minutes. I'm not like a chain vapor by any means. And I've been vaping on this thing since freaking for like a day. Almost like 24 hours. And I'm not even halfway through this battery. That's, that's stupid. Three, this thing has the quick charge feature. If you have have to have a two amp wall adapter. It does not come with a two amp wall adapter, but if you do, this thing will charge in no time. In temp mode, you could use all three wires, stainless steel, nickel, or titanium. That's another big pro to me. Also, the fact that you can adjust the wattage in temp mode, as you guys saw, is another big pro. Like I showed you guys before, there is minimal to no delay when you hit this fire button. It's got a super quick response. And I gotta say, this mod is ergonomic, feels good in the old hands, super comfy. This kit comes in four different color options, black, white, blue, and red. And as you guys probably already know, I prefer the 3300 milliamp hour built-in battery it's because it's just easy it, it eliminates that one step where you have to take the batteries out and charge it it's not only good for me but it's good for the newbie it's good for the guy and gal who wants to get off smoking and over to vaping for goodness sakes it's easy now the cons for this mod. As you guys saw in the close-ups with the iSub V screwed on here, there's going to be a tiny little gap, but when you start to screw other devices on there, that gap starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's it's not for every product or every delivery system device, but I will say half the ones that I own. Two, I did not see any way you could lock the resistance in temperature mode. Now, I'm using stainless steel coil head, so really, I mean, I haven't noticed anything anyways. It's been great. It's been fantastic. But for the guys and gals that like to use nickel and titanium, that could present a problem. Now, it may lock it already, but it doesn't ever show that. Maybe it does it automatically. I don't know. And it can make, that's something you guys need to address the public or the consumers about. Three, this thing does not, I haven't seen any upgradable firmware for it and some of you guys and gals are not gonna like that. And the last con, this is probably gonna be another subjective one, but the 3300 milliamp hour built-in battery, I like it, some of you guys may not. Now onto the pros for this iSub V. Okay, one, I love how compact it is. It holds 3.8 mils of juice and for how short this tank is, that's a lot of juice. Love the dual adjustable airflow, perfect amount of restrictiveness and it's smooth all across the board. Here, let me give you an example. Okay, she's wide open. I'm gonna cut her off, halfway open, quarter way open. I mean, it's smooth all across the board. That's what I mean. I really like the no spill coil head system where you can pop it in and out from the base. I think that's really cool. And it's convenient. The stainless steel coil that came with this kit, OMG on point, man. Some of the best flavor, especially for a sub ohm tank. It also came with a 0.5 ohm canthal coil head and that performed well. It didn't perform quite as well as the stainless steel, but it performed well. Another pro, this kit came with two downward drip tips. Both drip tips are super comfortable. I think they're the same drip tip, but still they're comfortable. Another cool innovation that Anakin came up with is this shaft section rising up and down as you guys saw in the close-up so when you take the top cap off okay you got like you saw when you fill it up it makes it easier because it closes off the juice flow control so the juice doesn't flood the coil head now when you pop the top cap on there when you're done filling her up it pushes that shaft section down opens her up opens the juice flow control up and the juice feeds to the coil like easy peasy what a sleazy goodness gracious another pro i almost forgot to mention all these other i sub coil heads for the other i sub devices are compatible with this this i sub v tank has been compatible with all the mods all the other mods that i own screwed down made a connection Set flush, oh yeah. Now onto the cop.
cons for this tank, and there's two major cons. One, it does not come with a replaceable tank. They state that it's replaceable on the box, on the site. No, it's not. That's false marketing. And two, this leads me to the replaceable part. This is not replaceable if it, if it came with an extra tank. You couldn't get it apart without shattering the tank. Three tanks shattered on me, almost cut the shit out of my hand. That's no good. And it can fix it, fix it, fix it. First of all, make it to where you can pull the tank out, one. And two, include an extra tank. And that leads me to talk about the big question, the big answer today. Hey, Rev, if you lost this sucker today, would you go out tomorrow and buy one? Here's the deal, Anakin, and to you consumers out there. Would I buy it? Me knowing that I sit at a desk all day, I would buy it. Do I recommend it? Hell yeah, I recommend it. But do I recommend it to the consumer that's out and about? No, I don't recommend this. But if you're sitting at your desk all day and you got it sitting upright, hell yes. This is Rep Chippers, and remember, smoking is dead. Vaping is the future, and the future is now.